All right, what's up, y'all? Um, today, I don't know if y'all noticed in one of my last videos, but um, I had a really bad brake squeaking problem, and that's hopefully not just because of the brake pads. It's hopefully because the shims were left off the brake pads because there wasn't room in there because it was so tight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, so in case you're wondering, it's those things right there. I gotta put on and hopefully that'll fix the problem because the brakes I bought were kind of a look at the draw thing. They may squeak, they may not. It was one of those. And I'm probably just gonna put a little bit of grease on the back of them. They may slide around a bit, but it's not that big of a deal. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna get to that. And uh, yeah, man, stick with me. So I got the wheel and everything off and there are plenty of STI brake pad how to so I'm not gonna film that whole part man You can find that on YouTube in like 10 seconds I'm just gonna get this done and show you all that and I may do something Else towards the end. I don't know depends on if I have time What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the front two on drive it around then do the back two Why because I don't want to have to deal with the reservoir overflowing and all that so just the front two drive it around and do the back two. let it all adjust itself So, just got this side done. They're a little bit more of a bitch to squeeze those little things in there than I thought. Little shims, but they went in there, so it's whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna go do the other side, and then I'm gonna drive it around, because, I mean, once I do all the sides, I don't really know, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know exactly how uh, uh, the system for, like, fluid works in a car, but I feel like if I start trying to do all of the sides and compressing the calipers, it's just gonna start overflowing the reservoir and the pressure is gonna be a lot more. So I feel like driving it around will move that shit all back where it needs to be and help with that. I mean, if you wanna go ask a drifter, I'm sure he'll know how the brake system in a car works much better than I do, but all I know is fluids go to different brakes and Things compress and shit happens, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I can with what I got. So I'm gonna drive it around after I do the other side. All right, in case y'all are wondering the easiest way to put on a wheel, I'm about to show you. You sit on your ass and you slide the wheel. Look at that. Look how easy that was. Bet y'all ain't never seen a tire put on that easy before unless it was like NASCAR or some shit. These wheels, I'm not gonna lie, they weigh a bit more, 
So I'm not trying to sit here and lift the wheel. I'm gonna use my feet, because I can. Basically, I'm just gonna repeat the whole thing for this side. Um, just take off the little pins in the back, slide out the, well, there's a locking sort of pin, and then there's a slide pin. You gotta get the locking, then you do the slide, and then you basically compress the caliper, uh, brake pad, and then you can slide in the shims and do all that good stuff. So, I'm gonna do that, and then repeat or go for a drive, then do that on the back side, and then I can do all my other stuff today and be good. All right. So, um, got that brake all back together. That one was a little bit more of a pain in the ass than the rest because the um, back backing plate didn't want to go on. So that I had to wiggle and screw with that for a while, but got it in there. So now I want to put this thing on and be ready to go. So, yeah. I'm trying to line up the tire bombs, you know, because it just looks better that way. cut I gotta fix something back here and then I'm gonna do all this but y'all don't need to see that it's just putting a wheel on the ground in case y'all are wondering this is what I'm about to fix let me see if I can loosen this oh no that's not gonna work but anyways um it's like having a colder intake on your car I don't know if y'all can see that very well it, it just doesn't have all the negative impacts see it goes into my air box up here and there and it sucks in cold air from the outside of the car, right here, okay? So, yeah, and yes, that is that is duct tape on there. I need new duct tape and zip ties, because I, I don't know, that's just the way I did it, but it works. So, oh, let me turn, yeah, that's what I'm about to do, and then I'm gonna put my wheel on, so, yeah. It's whatever. All right, y'all. Well, got the car started back up. No ABS lights or anything. Brake was a little soft, but that's to be expected. Um, and so we're cooking. I'm going to go take it for a drive, come back. Uh, I'm not really going to know if this whole thing worked or not, because I'm not going to let the brakes heat up enough to where they would start squeaking. So, um, yeah, because I don't feel like frying my hands today. But that's what I'm doing right now, so I'll get back to y'all. Got all of the car finished. Everything's back together. Um... I'm hoping that went all well. First drive with this, the fronts, that was fine. It didn't give me any problems. Um, now, most people, when they fill up their transmission, I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous video, on a six speed, get like 4.25. It recommends 4.5 quarts. When I drained everything, I measured it, what was in here, and it was like 3.75 quarts. I put the same amount back in, but I didn't really trust it, and I was kind of using like a funnel hose system, so if I overfilled it, I didn't really have a way to get it out easily without taking all the intercooler and everything off because I got a big heat shield and it makes it a bitch. So I'm going to take that off, try and fill up the tranny fluid, and then y'all might remember this hose from a few videos back. <laughs> Splice cut there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try and put that on the turbo. Um, obviously, it's gonna need some trimming, but I had to guesstimate the size because I didn't remember. So, yeah, do that now. Be back with y'all in a little while. Ooh, 
y'all don't even know. I forgot how much a bitch that fucking intercooler was to get off that thing right there. Yeah, I forgot, man. If you don't do things in the right order and you don't have everything like perfectly loose, shit does not want to come off. Anyways, it's pretty dark, but transmission's right back there. That's the new beefier transmission anyways. About to see if this hose fits and I'm gonna try and fill everything up and hopefully my life will be made easy from this point on, but I don't know. So, yeah. This is kind of a waste of a hose if you ask me, but um, the normal three inch ones won't work. I know this seems like that's all it is, but I've bought the three inch ones before. It just don't cut it. So I need a curve like this, not I need one like this with a little bit more length on one end than the other, which is this end and this one shorter, you know, aftermarket turbo problems, but it works. So I got to cut this up. I'll probably give a little bit more length to this side this time, but yep. That's the plan and I'm going to stick to that. That's the plan and I'm going to stick to it, you know? All right. So there's good and bad ways to do these. I like to take a piece of tape and mark off how much I'm going to cut after doing the other hose, or if you're guessing, I guess you would have to use rulers. I don't know, but I do this, then I use an X-Acto knife, and then we'll get to the rest and do that. Yeah, all right, y'all. So everybody needs to know there's a proper way to deal with a silicone hose. First of all, you wanna burn the end of it. Now, don't ask me why. It's just the way to do it. Now there is a proper way to burn things, like I said. If you don't know how, go and ask somebody that knows. For instance, an old shaman woman taught me. There's a guy up the street named Butch. I was taught by Bob Marley. A guy named James Franco. An Indian medicine man, Jimi Hendrix. Dave Chappelle. A hooker named Cherry. Mr. Orange. Dead guy named Larry. Stuart Little in person as the mouse. Zach Efron. It was actually my brother, but he's asking, right? Yeah, I am sweating. Like I said, I forgot how much of a, well, I don't know if I already said this on video, but I'm gonna say it again if I did. I forgot how much of a bitch that stupid intercooler is to get back on. Cause I mean, stock it's easy enough, but I got all these aftermarket hoses and nice things on there. Makes it a bitch if you're putting it back together in the wrong order. And then I had to take it off again cause I trimmed the hose a little bit wrong. But damn, y'all can't, y'all can't see it. That's as bright as it can go, but my little hose is like, right there i'll try and brighten it up later on for you but yeah i'ma go get a shower close this thing up and um go for a drive because i gotta go get the food and i'm hungry so deuces all right y'all what's up um i know that video ended abruptly but that's basically that was the drivetrain swap that was the last bit of things i had to do to mop up everything that had been done you know because everything with the drivetrain is set now um here in the next video, I swapped out uh, a drivetrain mount and uh, some bush shifter bushings, but I mean, that was just something I chose to do because the uh, transmission was tapping a bit. But um, yeah, all in all, man, uh, like I originally said, I was going to do it myself, but then, you know, school came up and I couldn't get the car high enough off the ground. I know that's a bitch excuse, but I really couldn't. I mean, I was already stacking blocks of wood to try and do it and... Shit was unsafe and I had never done it before, so I I didn't want to take the chance of my car being down for months right when, when school was like a week away. I, I, I couldn't do that. So basically it had to wait. I ended up taking it to a Brad over at Engine Logics. If you live in Houston, some of y'all might know him. He doesn't, for some reason, he doesn't put his shop out there a whole lot from what I can tell with Subaru events, which, I mean, I think he should. He does pretty decent work. But, um... Yeah, everybody I've talked to about him, you know, say he does good work. There are a few things, but, you know, it wasn't shit I couldn't fix, and it really wasn't on him. I should have explained stuff better, but, yeah, I mean, everybody else wanted to charge a fucking arm and a leg to do this work, and I didn't have that money, and then the people that were I was originally taking the car to kind of bitched out last second, so, I mean, it's it's been a long road, but car is working well um, I'm happy about that and uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it man I know the videos weren't that great but it was a preoccupied thing so I mean I, I did what I can to try to keep y'all updated hopefully I can keep the videos coming 
better videos. Um, I know I'm going to need to get an oil cooler for that thing because, I mean, the RPMs are ridiculously fucking high on the freeway. It sucks. I only drive like 60 on the freeway now where 80 used to be my cruising speed, you know, 75, 80. Because this is Texas, man. Let's let's be honest. We don't do the speed limit here. If you're from Texas, you know you don't do the fucking speed limit. But I am forced to now, and right now I'm between building a new engine for the car or getting another car, and I'm just, eh, but I'll probably build another engine, let's be honest. Loyalty to the car, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed. I'll see y'all next time. Deuces. <laughs> Dum 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 d